a very happy new year to you all and a very blessed epiphany. I sometimes think that epiphany gets the short straw when it comes to our celebrations at this time of the year. We do Advent rather well, lots of books that you can read during the Advent season and we have our candles and our calendars and then we have the 12 days of Christmas but by the time we get to epiphany we're somehow exhausted or we're tied up trying to keep our New Year's resolutions or concentrating on that new start back to work or even back to the gym. In this reflection for Epiphany, I want to readdress that and to offer a variety of ways in which you can re-engage with the story and enter into the joy, mystery and wonder of this amazing story of the Magi from the East, who, guided by a bright star, bring their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to Jesus. So let's begin by reminding ourselves of the story. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He said to them, Go to Bethlehem, and said, Go, and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of frankincense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So friends, we're going to look at a couple of ways in which we can engage with the gospel story. So you may want to read the story again. It's in the Gospel of Matthew. And in the light of the narrative that we have heard and that you have just reread, and in your own experience, you may want to reflect on these questions. Who am I called to be? How do I discern my call? What gifts do I bring? How do I enable others to offer what they bring? And how do I help others to hear their call? Spend some time just reflecting on those questions. You may want to journal some answers, to pray around them, to walk with them, if that's a helpful way of you reflecting on how these words and how this narrative is speaking to you today. And secondly, I've asked my colleague Clive from Take Time if he will offer a Take Time meditation. These meditations are an invitation 
to imagine ourselves into the gospel story. This imaginative contemplation of the gospels is part of the Ignatian tradition. And here Clive offers an opportunity to pray and to imagine yourself into this story. So let's listen to Clive and to the Take Time Meditation. Welcome to Take Time, your opportunity to pause in the busyness of life, to quieten your mind and allow your spirit some sanctuary. Don't worry if your mind wanders, Usually it wanders to places that bring insight or healing. If it wanders somewhere unhelpful, gently bring it back. Now close your eyes if that feels comfortable. And picture yourself with Jesus in the dead of night, sitting around a fire in the camp of some important travellers from the east. These travellers known as Magi, have retired to their tents, but their servants, taking you as fellow travellers, have invited you to join them around the fire. One of them is explaining. Our expedition began about three months ago. It was shortly after our masters saw a star in the east, which indicated that a child had been born who would be king of the Jews. A few nights ago, we arrived in Jerusalem, assuming that the child was born there. The masters told King Herod that they'd come to worship this new king of the Jews, but he knew nothing about it. The religious leaders were summoned, and they explained that according to the scriptures, Bethlehem is prophesied to be the Messiah's birthplace. Then Herod instructed our masters, Go to Bethlehem and find the child, then report back to me, so that I too may worship him. Last night the star appeared again, and the masters were overjoyed. It led us here to Bethlehem, and to the house where the child and his parents are staying. After seeing the child, the Magi told us they just knew in their hearts that he is the one born to be king of the Jews. They even knelt down and worshipped him, before presenting him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Tomorrow we go back and tell Herod. Suddenly one of the Magi emerges from his tent looking very agitated, and the servant who's been speaking runs towards him asking, Is everything all right, master? Their master says, I've been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. Tell the others that first thing in the morning we head straight for home. The servants rush off to make new arrangements for the morning. And you are left alone by the fire with Jesus. As you stare together into the flames, he invites you to share with him whatever is on your mind Whatever is in your heart, just take this opportunity now. And now listen as Jesus responds to what you have shared with him. Just be open to his response, whether it be in actions, or as a feeling, or an image, or in words. Hear him speak your name. And wait for his response.
hold on to anything that Jesus has shared with you and gently and slowly bring yourself back to this time and this place. So these are some other ways in which we might celebrate Epiphany. I wonder if you have chalked the entrance to your home. This tradition has become more popular in the last few years and the formula for the ritual is simple. You take the year, which is 2021, and you take the initials of the Magi, Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar, and you write it like this, 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 21. The letters here also abbreviate the Latin phrase Christus Mansionem Benedicat. May Christ bless this house. The plus sign, of course, represents the cross and the 20 at the beginning and the 21 at the end mark the year. And together, this is an invitation for Christ to bless the house of the people who live in this dwelling throughout the entire year. But you may also wish to write these initials and these dates onto your avatar for your social media. It's a great tool for evangelism, as everybody, all your friends will, of course, ask and say to you, what does that mean? So you have an opportunity to, um, to tell them. Perhaps the most obvious way of engaging with the Epiphany story is to think about how we might pray with the stars, pray with the universe. Perhaps you live in an area of light pollution where you can't see the sky at night very clearly. I used to live on the North Yorkshire Moors just outside Whitby and it was glorious to just spend some time in the evenings at night time just gazing up into the sky. I sometimes think that we spend so much time looking down that we've actually forgotten to look up. Perhaps you were like me, brought up um, on the sky at night with uh, Patrick Moore, or you might be somebody that has got a little bit more interested in the universe with Brian Cox and the stargazing programmes. Um, these are all just fabulous examples of how we are becoming more aware of our place in the universe. I've got here a wee uh, container of sand. and I'm going to try and get one grain of this sand on the end of my finger. It's quite hard. And um, maybe you might like to try this with, with some sand or some sugar or glitter or anything that you've got at, at home. And then imagine that this grain of sand is our sun the star that we see most days. Our solar system with its major planets and their moons are clustered around it. Now, we see this as the brightest star in our galaxy, yet in comparison with others, it's quite small. On a good dark night, we might see two to three thousand stars. But we now know that actually just in the Milky Way galaxy alone, there are between 200 and 400 billion stars. We would need a large dumper truck to contain them all. We used to think that our own galaxy was all that there is until astronomers and physicists found new ways of looking further and deeper. We now know that there are billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars. So imagine a railway truck full of sand, perhaps the kind of truck used to transport coal. And imagine one of those passing you every second, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it would take three years of passing trucks to represent all the stars in the known universe. So the invitation for praying with the stars and with the universe is to go outside and it's great to be able to do this at the winter time in the UK. Um, go outside and spend some time looking up at the night sky. Some time in just wonder and amazement for all that is. You might want to download some of the stargazing apps that you can use. 
the night sky or stargazing, any of those ones, and just take in a little bit more of the vastness and wonder of the universe. And to thank God for all that we are continuing to discover. Maybe you might want to spend some time in just amazement and wonder for all that is. The gift of the created earth and your life on this planet, orbiting our sun, represented here by just one tiny grain of sand. <laughs>